Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin, welcome back to my channel. So a little fun fact about me that I feel like some of you might know based on another video that I did not that long ago is that I love Barbie movies, but I haven't actually watched all of them. I've only seen up until like Island Princess. So I thought it'd be a great idea to have a Barbie movie marathon. I watched all 36 movies with my roommate Nina and now I'm here to rank them all for you guys. I have a very big stack of DVDs beside me because there are so many movies. I honestly would not recommend binge watching all of them and that's why I'm making this video so you guys know which ones to watch and which ones that you can probably skip. Oh, I also wanted to mention that this is obviously just my opinion and I am a little bit biased to the ones I grew up with, but I did try to remove some of that when making this list. And so with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. What if cupcakes were as big as a house? So coming in at number 36 is Barbie and her sisters in a puppy chase. Now this one's about Barbie and her sisters. They go to this tropical island because Chelsea has a dance competition, but then they lose their puppies and they have to go and find their puppies and it's like this whole adventure. Now this movie is probably the most frustrating movie I've ever seen in my entire life and Barbie is the most irresponsible older sister literally ever. They come to this island, like I said, because Chelsea's got a dance recital, but she doesn't let Chelsea practice at all. And then so she ends up like not doing very great in her competition Sorry about the spoiler, but that's not really that big of a spoiler if you watch the movie. Anyways, basically she gets them stranded and they're living off of granola bars for like a solid few days and they like camping out in the woods and they have to sleep in a golf cart and Barbie is just like, be positive guys, it's okay. When I'm like, you're, these, you're, <laughs> you guys are stranded. It's hard to be positive. And then they make up this what if game. What if a giant submarine comes out of the water right now and the captain tells you you have to live underwater from now on? which has been like a joke between me and Nina since where it's like, what if we didn't have to sleep on the ground and weren't stranded out in a jungle? And they were like, yeah, that'd be great. Like, it's such a pointless game. And this movie was just so frustrating. It's like the animation was all right and there was dancing horses. So that's interesting. But let's move on to number 35. So I've got Barbie Spy Squad next. Not only do these babies protect your head, they protect you from helmet hair. So this one's about Barbie and her friends and they become spies. It's kind of like totally spies, but it's Barbie. And honestly, the concept wasn't that bad. Like I was interested in like the whole spy kind of theming and all of that. It just, it was such a boring movie. Like not much happened and they were such bad spies. They couldn't do anything. And then when they did do something in the end, it just felt like they were bad throughout the whole movie and then they got good for like the ending. It was just a really boring movie and I definitely would not recommend it and I probably will never watch it ever again. Hello. <laughs> I'm Prince Liam. So coming in at number 34, we've got Barbie, Princess, and the Pop Star. Now this one is pretty true to name. You've got a princess, you got a pop star, they switch places. And I tried my absolute best to go into this movie open-minded because I know it's a lot of people's favorites, but <laughs> this movie was just so bad. I just, it was honestly just a disgrace of the princess and the pop her name. You've got these two girls who were just so ungrateful and talking about how they wish they had someone else's lives when they had such good lives. And then you've got this pop star who's like lying to her record company saying that she's written her whole album when she hasn't even started it yet. And then this princess is just supposed to write this speech and she like just won't do it. And they're both just ungrateful and it made me mad. And then there was like this magic tree, which I guess was like the kingdom's wealth, but then the kingdom was in poverty. So that was really weird. And this guy was trying to steal it, but his motives were really unclear. The one nice thing I can say though, is that here I am, it's a boss and probably one of my favorite Barbie songs. Unfortunately, it's the only good song in this film. They've got this really bad cover of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, but it's Princesses Just Wanna Have Fun, and then they do a terrible take on To Be A Princess. That makes me so upset. But yeah, here I am is good, and honestly, the reason why it's not like number 36 on this list is because it was so fun to watch this movie with Nina and just kind of make fun of it. Like it was just such a bad movie that it was so entertaining and so that's Princess and the Pop Star. I would honestly kind of recommend watching it um, just because it was entertaining. <laughs> huh? The name's Sparkle. Super Sparkle. So this one's about Barbie. She's a princess named Kara. She gets kissed by a butterfly and then becomes a superhero because, oh, the butterfly is magic. So this movie like really wasn't that bad. I just didn't really like it that much. Um, like out of all these movies on this list, this one definitely wasn't that bad. I just really didn't like it for some reason. I just found it to be a little bit boring and there was like sort of a ship, but then they don't really utilize it. And then the guy kind of like turns on her and then she like weirdly 
is all right with it and then at the end there's like lava coming from a volcano and it like surrounds the palace and then Kara just like pushes it and then it's fine that's not really how lava works so that kind of made me mad but it honestly like wasn't that bad I just don't really like it what will there be a handbook this one is Barbie she's telling the story of Thumbelina but it's not the story like the actual Thumbelina story it's like a Barbie exclusive Thumbelina story where it's like the Twiller bees and they live in this um flower garden that's about to be like bulldozed over and so Thumbelina becomes friends with this human kid to help save their like field and honestly I feel like the concept of it is pretty neat like it's good environmental um we're all about that being green. I think I almost fell asleep, but I do like the message. I think the message is really good. And I do like the merch. The dolls are really cute. It's just, it was kind of boring in my opinion. So I would recommend skipping this one if you're doing a Barbie marathon yourself. Tell her the soup was yummy. And how was the baguette? I did not receive a baguette. Exactly. We've got her sisters. They're back again and they're gonna go to this place. <laughs> to uh ride horses oh it was her aunt's place her aunt has a ranch and yeah and then while they're there barbie discovers this like magical race of horses that are white and that's why they're magic because they have pink hair too <laughs> i think i missed something i don't remember why they were magical but this movie like was just kind of boring in my opinion i like the concept of it and there was this cute little thing with skipper and this one boy and that was really cute but overall like it just seemed really boring and the magical horses didn't really seem to have any significance i don't know i felt like it just there was nothing that really happened in this movie so that's that one let's move on that means you can say congrats on your win bella i think you mean congrats on your win chris so you're npcs you're an npc yeah i was actually pleasantly surprised with this movie it's about barbie obviously she goes into this video game and she has to like beat every level to help them get rid of a virus um she's also a coder so that's cool but what i liked about this one is that it would have you anticipating every level so like every level would be a different animation and every level would be different from the previous level and so that was interesting but it was kind of boring and there was a lot of just dance plugs which um <laughs> were unnecessary i don't know if this movie was sponsored it's got it had to have been sponsored do you know what's even more awesome no what just dance but i do like that they did introduce like video games to the barbie universe um i would have preferred if they weren't so stereotypically girly but it is barbie so like what can you expect um but overall this one was actually pretty good i didn't hate it oh no look so this is one that I remember watching when I was younger because my sister Carrie really liked it. Um, and I remember liking it back then, but then after re-watching it, um, I didn't enjoy it as much. It's basically about um, Barbie and her sisters. They're going on a trip again, um, but this time they want to go to New York for Christmas, but then they get snowed in and they end up having Christmas in like this little um, lodge sort of place in um, the woods, <laughs> sort of. It's kind of stranded from civilization, but it's also a musical. So it's got that going for it, but it was kind of just boring, which seems to be a trend with some of these films. The message was cute. I don't really remember what it was, but I remember thinking it was cute. Oh, the only thing I wrote down is that I fell asleep watching it. So, um, it's all right. <laughs> I can't believe you put that one ahead of video games. I think it may be maybe nostalgia. I don't know. That's ridiculous. It had no plot. <laughs> but it had songs. Next up, we've got Barbie, um, Secret Door. Ah, uh, yes, well, that's a bit tender. So this one's about Barbie as Princess Alexa. She's like a socially awkward princess who likes to read in her room and not socialize with others. Very relatable character. She finds the secret door in her garden and is brought into this realm of mermaids and fairies and she is princess so she has magic in this realm and so she has to help them defeat this evil person who's like stealing all the magic and it was actually not as bad as i thought it was gonna be i actually did enjoy this movie it was pretty entertaining the only thing is like every time i think about this movie it makes me kind of sick for some reason i think it was just all of the bright colors were a little bit overwhelming for me um but there were songs and i've got magic played a lot and it was kind of catchy so yeah this one actually wasn't that bad i kind of would recommend it but I haven't really decided if I would or not. So I guess make the decision on your own 
if you were to watch it. One thing is though, they kept saying in this movie that um, princesses have magic, only princesses have magic, or like when you're a princess you have magic. And so we were able to use that knowledge to our advantage when watching all these other movies. If someone had magic and it wasn't really explained, if they were a princess then like it would make sense because they have magic. Okay, let's move on. Then I dove underwater and I could breathe. And then a dolphin spoke to me. Wow. So this one is about Merlia. She's like a surfer girl and then she finds out that she's half mermaid and she has to go and like save the mermaid kingdom from this evil person. And so this one was pretty good. Um, I definitely remember liking it more when I was younger. I don't, I think I watched it. I'm not 100% sure. My younger sister Clover likes this one, I think. And I know that this one is pretty popular. I just found it kind of boring when we were watching it. And there was a lot of plot holes, but it did give me like 13th year vibes. So like, I like that. Let's move on. Ooh, there's a bench. So this one's about Barbie and her sisters, believe it or not. They are going to visit their grandmother and they find this like scavenger hunt sort of treasure map and so they decide to like solve this map and find the treasure. This one I found kind of boring but I really liked the concept and I liked the animation in it. The one thing that really bugged me though is they kept saying that like Barbie's grandfather worked like his whole life to try to find this treasure and he could never find it. It was such like this thing that he tried so hard to find it and he couldn't find it but then obviously these kids find it in like the span of this movie. So I'm like how incompetent was their grandfather that he could not find this treasure that it took them like a couple days to find. I don't know. I just thought that was funny but like overall it was kind of boring. Um, but the dogs were cute, so that's good. Yes! Barbie in A Christmas Carol. This one's actually a lot older than I thought it was, and I'm surprised that I never watched it before. Um, it's basically like The Christmas Carol, but it's Barbie, which is kind of weird to have Barbie like as Scrooge. Like, it's not someone you'd expect Barbie to be, but then she's also kind of playing a character, you know, because she's an actress in the Barbie universe. <laughs> Um, yeah, this one is pretty good. I mean, it's a Christmas Carol, so you can't really do that one wrong. But yeah, a new Christmas classic for me to watch, for sure. Next up, Barbie Mariposa and the Fairy Princess. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? You knocked the king's crown off his head with your wing? Oh! Whoa. So this one is a sequel to Mariposa. Um, this one is about Mariposa. She's a butterfly fairy, and she has to go to the crystal fairy realm. Um, to like defeat racism, I guess. And it was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. It's weird that they made this sequel so much later after the first one. But yeah, I thought the plot line was almost better than the first one. The only reason why I have this one um, lower is because it really made me mad that they got rid of Elena in the beginning, um, which we'll talk more about when we get to Mariposa. But yeah, overall, I actually really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> So this one is Barbie Fairytopia, Magic of the Rainbow. It's the third movie in the Fairytopia series. Basically, it's about Alina, our main gal. She is a fairy and <laughs> she goes to this like fairy school to like learn fairy stuff. I just like the concept of this one. Not as much as the other two, but this one's fun. Bibble gets like a significant other in this movie and Alina has a boy in this one too, which is cute. And yeah, I like it, it's good. Give me three. Okay, three. Oh. This one was actually very good. I was very pleasantly surprised. It's basically like Rapunzel, but fish. So like Barbie is Lumina and she is like the lost princess. And so she like has to find her way back to the palace. And this one had like a really good plot and I was really engaged with this movie the whole time I was watching it. It's just really cute. And I love how excited her character got when she like had a job. And I could just totally see myself loving this one as a kid. And yeah, it was just really adorable. I loved it. Oh, Mariposa. So this is the first one. We talked about the sequel, but we didn't talk about the first one. So this is the first one. Should I mention that it's the first one again? <laughs> Okay, so Barbie Mariposa. So it's about Mariposa. She's a butterfly fairy who um, has to go and like save her queen because her queen's been poisoned. So she has to go and find um, the antidote to the poison. The one thing I didn't understand though was all the various accents in this film. Um, especially the prince. He puts on a really weird accent. I am so sorry. I don't mean to startle you. But yeah, the ship was cute. I like how they both liked books. And I actually, yeah, I enjoyed this one. It was really reminiscent to me of the older Barbie films. I also really liked how Alina started narrating the story. Um, yeah, it was just kind of cool how it was like a spin-off of Fairytopia. How dare she? I wanted that cake. 
So this one is one that I know is a lot of people's favorites, but for me rewatching it, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I remembered. It's about Blair. She wins a lottery um, to attend Princess Charm School. And I really liked the concept of it. It really reminded me of like the selection sort of, or like Hunger Games, but like without all the killing and like princesses instead. But I found the overall plot of it to be kind of boring and predictable. And so that's why I do have it so far back on the list. But yeah, you can tell she's a princess is a catchy song. So that's good. She held the hoodie? I really liked this one a lot more than the first one. Um, Merlia is back again. She's got her friends. They're going to Australia for a surfing competition, but then the evil lady from Mermaid Tale 1 comes back and she has to like go stop her. And honestly, I just felt like the plot of this movie was a lot stronger. It wasn't as boring. And I really liked the dynamic of Merlia and the Australian girl that was introduced. There was a couple like plot holes or things that would happen that were like really dumb. But overall, it was like an enjoyable film. And so yeah, that's why it's uh, higher up than the first one. <laughs> Free him! <laughs> I'm gonna eat some! Now this one is interesting for me because growing up I hated this movie even though I had never seen it. Um, I think it was probably just because like I was sad that I didn't enjoy Barbie movies as much as I used to. I don't know, or I was growing up and didn't want to like them anymore. I don't know. You basically follow these two girls. They're like poor and stuff, but then they find this like magical mirror. They go on this whole quest to find the diamond castle and they meet these like twin brothers. It's also a musical, which I really like. Although I'm still confused about Connected as to if it's a cover or not because it was also an aquamarine. And so I'm just forever confused about that song. Um, but I do really like this movie. I understand why it is a lot of people's favorites. Um, yeah, cause I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. What is this? Uh, bread? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I love bread. It's so mm, dry. <laughs> You're quirky. No, I actually loved this movie. Like, every time I think about it, I'm like, wow, that was such a good movie, and I really liked it. Basically, it's about Barbie and her sisters. They're on a vacation again, kind of like Puppy Chase, but better. They're at a tropical island, and Ken's there, too, because he's an intern at this Marine Life Institute, which is, like, so weird, but in the best possible way. Basically, when they're there, they meet this mermaid, and they team up with her to help free these magical gemstone dolphins that Ken's evil boss is, like, holding hostage. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I love the aesthetic of this film. It really reminded me of like Sims 3 tropical like island expansion pack, if anybody else knows what I'm talking about. That's what this movie reminded me of. It was just an enjoyable film and I liked it and that's how I feel. Oh yeah, also as you guys know, I get very obsessed with things. So after I liked Dolphin Magic, I bought a bunch of merchandise. So I have the dolls. This is Barbie. This is the mermaid. Um, they're best friends and I kind of ship them a little bit. So that's all, let's move on. Right now, I've got somewhere else to be. Now this is another one that I know is a lot of people's favorites and it's one that I watched for the first time uh, for this video and I really enjoyed it. Barbie was like a strong, independent woman. Basically it's about Barbie and she wants to be a musketeer so she travels to Paris and like becomes a musketeer because she's cool like that. Um, but it had a really good ship and I just really liked the storyline in this movie. It was really cool to see Barbie like being a musketeer. It was cool. I liked it. Oh, my nose! On oh, my wedding day, too. So this one is a little bit different from the rest of the Barbie movies. It kind of pairs up with Fashion Fairy Tale because it exists in this, like, realm where it's, like, Barbie is in the movie as Barbie and she's the same Barbie that is the actress in, like, the most of these movies except for the sisters one because I guess those are not really <laughs> actress movies. It's not like Barbie as. I don't know, the Barbie universe is confusing. <laughs> but basically Barbie is Barbie in this movie. Ken gets captured by these fairies and then she ends up having to go to this like fairy realm to like retrieve them. And it's just so funny. I just really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really good. Not now, Clive. Uh, 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 so number 14 is Barbie Rock and Royals, which I have on DVD and Blu-ray because it's just so good. I love this movie so much. Okay, so basically you've got two camps, right? You've got Camp Royalty and Camp Pop. Then you've got two girls. You've got Princess Courtney and super pop sensation Erica. And so each of them is supposed to go to their respective camps, but something happens and they accidentally end up at the other person's camp. It's very Camp Rock 2 meets Pitch Perfect in a way, which you probably wouldn't understand unless you watched it. Basically stuff happens and they have to like work together to save the camp. But I really enjoyed this movie. The music was really good and the plot was really good probably because it basically was just Camp Rock 2, but Barbie form. But yeah, I really like this movie. What If I Shine is another one of my favorite Barbie songs. And so that's in this movie as well. 
um, Courtney's version, not the pop version, although that one's good too, but Courtney's version is just so much better. Um, but yeah, honestly, I recommend Rock and Royals. Check that out if you haven't seen it. Rock and Royals. It was pretty good. Barbie! Ken? Ken! Barbie, I would never break up with you. I didn't. I promise you it was all a misunderstanding. This one kind of fits in with the lore of Barbie A Fairy Secret. This one came beforehand, um, but it fits into like, this is Barbie, um, but she's in the universe of Barbie as the actress in all of these movies. And so what happens is she gets fired from her latest movie and then Ken dumps her and so her life is just not working out. So she decides to go to Paris to visit her aunt who's a fashion designer and like help save her business basically. But this is one that I remember my sister Carrie watching a lot. I really like the plotline with her and Ken and I did just really enjoy this movie. I think it's really good. I like the songs too, like uh, Get Your Sparkle On is a bop and Life is a Fairy Tale is good too. It's just a good movie. I really like it. I do have like some nostalgia towards it but not as much as like the next ones coming up on this list. Okay, number 12. <laughs> Barbie Fairytopia. So this is the first one in the Barbie Fairytopia series. We follow Alina, who is a fairy who can't fly. And then when like a magic like curse thing gets placed across the land, all of the fairies who can fly like can't fly anymore. And so Alina is the only one that can like save the land because she can't fly in the first place. So she's the one who has to like travel to save her land. And this is one that I really remember loving as a kid. I think if seven-year-old me was to make this list this one would probably be like number three but going back and re-watching them this one I just found to be kind of boring but I do love Bibble and I just couldn't put this one farther back on the list because it is so nostalgic for me I just remember loving this one so much as a kid I would watch it all the time <laughs> paper this one was another one that was very pleasantly surprising for me. I absolutely loved this movie. It's basically like Barbie's take on sci-fi, but also like dystopian teen novels in a way. Basically, Barbie is in this like space universe where like the stars are about to go out, which I guess is bad. I forget why, but they don't want that to happen. And so they recruit a bunch of people to come to like the capital to help make sure the stars don't go out. And Barbie is one of those people that gets recruited. And so she like has to help save the galaxy. And it's just so neat and such a different movie from all of the other Barbie movies. And it was very aesthetically pleasing. Like the animation in this one was actually really beautiful. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a little bit slow at some points, but overall this was a really good movie and I would highly recommend it if you are a Barbie fan and want to watch one of the newer ones, I would definitely recommend to watch this one. Also, Shooting Star is a great song and I'm in love with it. So yeah. Don't worry, Clara. I'm just wood. Number 10 is Barbie and the Nutcracker, which I've got on DVD and VHS. Um, Barbie and the Nutcracker is really nostalgic for me. It's the very first Barbie movie. I feel like it was a little bit more of my older sister's generation than mine, but then again, it's Jackie's favorite. So maybe that's not true, but I also think it's only her favorite because it's the only one she's seen. I don't know, Jackie, let me know down below. Um, Jackie's my best friend, by the way. But just after rewatching it, I didn't enjoy the plot as much as I did when I was younger, similar to Fairytopia. Um, but it definitely is a Christmas classic that I will watch every single year without a doubt. And the dance numbers are amazing in it and I really enjoy it. And I don't even think I talked about the plot. Basically, it's the Nutcracker. Um, kind of, Clara goes to this um, Nutcracker realm and she has to defeat the Rat King. That's the plot. <laughs> so my mic cut out from numbers 9 to 3, so let's just pretend I look exactly the same and move on to number 9. <laughs> is the second one in the Fairytopia series and my personal favorite. I just really like the concept of this film. Basically, the Mer Prince of Mermaidia gets captured by the evil lady from the Fairytopia series. And so Alina has to become a mermaid to save him and all of the rest of the mer people. And I just really like the storyline of this one. I like Bibble in this one, which is the same as every other Fairytopia movie because Bibble is like one of the best characters ever. And I really like the relationship between Nalu and Nori. I just like that Barbie's not the one with the guy because they were kind of hinted at in the first movie, but I find Nori and Nalu's storyline to just be so much more interesting and they're just so adorable. And yeah, I just liked this one the most out of the Topias, and I watched this one a lot as a kid, so it's really nostalgic for me. This is another one I watched as a kid and I didn't really like that much, but I loved it when I rewatched it. So basically you follow Ro, she was on a shipwreck as a kid and was stranded on a deserted island. Well, it's not really deserted. There's a bunch of animals. I don't really know what deserted means, I guess. Does animals count? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's deserted because there's no people, right? I think so. 
But yeah, I really liked it. It was kind of like Little Mermaid meets Tarzan in a way. And it's also a musical, which is like the best part about this movie. And the plot line was really good. There were some minor like plot holes or like things that would happen really abruptly or just things that like didn't really make much sense. But overall, it was like a really enjoyable film and I really liked it. I also really like how in the back of this disc it says Barbie talks and sings with the animals. So, what's not to love? Just to set the record straight, I do wash my clothes. This is one that I absolutely loved as a kid. Like I remember renting this one from Blockbuster on numerous occasions. I feel like that's gonna age me, but what can you do? The animation of this movie is probably the worst animation from any Barbie film. I don't know why they chose the style that they did, but I just love the storyline of this one. Basically, you've got Barbie, but she's in high school, so that's cool and different. And she decides that she wants this year to be the best year ever, and to do that, she wants to be the news anchor for like their high school news. But to do this, she's gotta have like a really good story, so she decides to do a story about the popular people, which sounds very familiar. Basically, I just love how different it is. Like, there's no other Barbie movie where Barbie's in high school, and it's kind of like like geek charming meets mean girls in a way and it's just a really fun movie even though the animation is terrible like you got a good ship great songs and yeah I love the teen dramas so this one is a win for me Giselle and I milked our first cows together remember Giselle I got you your first bucket so number six is another one that I have on DVD and Blu-ray because I love this movie so much. Barbie in the Pink Shoes is a newer one that I really didn't think I would end up loving as much as I did. Basically, you follow Kristen, she gets these magic pink shoes and then is transported into all these different ballets. And she basically has to like dance her way to freedom, which sounds weird, but it worked really well. I just love the concept of this one and it's probably another one of the funniest Barbie movies because of those two princes in the ballet are just so hilarious. Also for all of my fellow Jane the Virgin fans, Brett Dyer voices Ken's character in this movie and that just makes it even better and Keep On Dancing is such a good song definitely in my top 10 Barbie songs. I just really liked this movie and was very surprised by it like I didn't expect to have a newer sort of Barbie movie in the top 10 but it was a really good movie and yeah I'd highly recommend it if you haven't seen it and you like Barbie movies to give it a watch because it was really good. Thank you that's very helpful. So Barbie as Rapunzel is another one that's just super nostalgic for me because I love this one so much as a kid. It's basically like the fairy tale where Rapunzel is kidnapped by Gothel as a kid and and then she's like trapped in a tower but then she finds this magical paintbrush from her parents and that's how she's able to like escape and growing up this was like my Rapunzel story since I didn't have Tangled until like I was a bit older and so whenever I think of Rapunzel this is another movie that always comes to mind I really like the aesthetic and the plot of this film and the merchandise was really good as well also Penelope is like the best dragon ever it's just a really good movie and it's one of the classics so I couldn't not have it this high up they run away you gobbler we don't need you today so number four is another fan favorite, Barbie and the 12 Dancing Princesses. It's about Princess Genevieve and her 12 dancing sisters. Oh, wait, no, 11, because she would be the 12th. Okay, it's about Genevieve and her 11 dancing sisters, and they discover this like magical land under their bedroom. That sounds really weird. It's basically like a magical portal under their bedroom. That doesn't sound any better, but if you've seen the movie, you'll understand. They're forbidden from dancing in their real lives, and so then once they discover this like magical land, they're able to go there and dance, and it's just a really good movie. It's really aesthetically pleasing. I just love the ship in it, and I love the dancing in it, and I love all the princesses' different personalities. Like, they're just all so spunky and fun. And yeah, it's just a really good movie, really nostalgic for me, and Shine is another one of my favorite Barbie movie songs, and so yeah, this one's a really good one. If you haven't seen it, Definitely go watch it because it's just, it's really good. Make it go away, Daddy! Daddy! Barbie of Swan Lake was one of my absolute favorites growing up. I would watch this on repeat as well. The aesthetic of this movie is so good. It's basically like the ballet. I think I've never seen it, but I assume that's what it's like since it's based off of that. Odette discovers this like magical forest, but it's ruled by this evil guy. And then she ends up being the chosen one to defeat him. And then he finds out and turns her into a swan. And it's just such a good movie and definitely the prettiest Barbie movie ever. I love the ballet in this one. And I really like that it introduced me to the music of this ballet as well, because the music is just so beautiful. Also, Lila is just the best unicorn ever, and the ship in this movie is somewhat decent. I also just think of this movie, and it reminds me of playing those games on Barbie.com that were like the best ever. Also, the Kellys in this movie were adorable, probably because they were themed off of animals, but they were just the best. Especially the skunk, I just loved her. She had so much spunk. A spunky skunk. That's weird, I should cut that out. Now, 
Now this one may seem like an odd choice for some of you, but it was my personal favorite growing up. I was obsessed with this movie. I remember being Annika one year for Halloween. I remember having these Pegasus wings that would like flap and I would wear them around the house. <laughs> and I have so many memories of like watching this movie at my grandparents and my mom's at my dad's. Like I'd watch this movie religiously everywhere. I was just so obsessed. But basically it's about Annika. She's an ice skating princess and she has to go on this mission to find all the pieces to create a wand of light, which is like a magical wand. Um, that she's gonna use to defeat Wenlock, who's like this evil guy who's frozen her family and all of her people. And I honestly just love the adventure in this film, and the ship is probably my favorite ship from any Barbie movie. I just love the banter that her and him have, and it's just such a beautifully, aesthetically pleasing film as well. I love that she's an ice skater, and Hope Has Wings is one of the best Barbie songs. Like, Brie Larson delivers with that song. It is so good. It was also really neat because it was released, like, as Barbie's first 3D movie. I don't even remember, like, how well that worked, but it was definitely a thing, and I remember playing the games on barbie.com and yeah it was a fun time a lot of good memories with this film and that's mainly why it is this high up because it is so nostalgic for me but I also just think it is a really great film so yeah that's why it is number two ah! next week Okay, so number one should come as to no surprise to some of you if you've seen my other Barbie video, but of course it is Princess and the Popper. Now Barbie as Princess and the Popper, in my personal opinion, is like on a whole nother level from the rest of these 35 movies. Like all of these movies are good, but Princess and the Popper is great. Here's the rest of them, and then here's the tier that Princess and the Popper exists on. It's on like another level. I don't even think it should be compared. Like I would see this list as like my top 35, yeah? And then this is number one on the list of the best Barbie movies because it is the best and there is no comparison there is no competition <laughs> so I've been talking about Princess and the Popper you might want to know what's it about if you've never seen it it's basically about uh, Annalise and Erica Annalise is a princess Erica is popper they meet and find out that they're identical they both connect over the fact that they both feel like trapped in their lives and then once Annalise comes missing, she gets kidnapped. Uh, Julian, Annalise's tutor, gets Erica to help in finding kind of the princess by like impersonating her. But it's like so that he can figure out who's um, kidnapped her. And it's just such a good movie. It's a musical. And y'all know I love musicals. And I think it's the best musical ever. As some of you know, I don't just think this is the best Barbie movie of all time. I think it's the best movie of all time. That is how much I love this movie. But since I have a whole other video talking about why I think Princess and the Popper is the best movie of all time, I'll save that for that video. I'm sure I'll put an info card somewhere so you can go watch it if you haven't seen it. But overall, it's got a great plot line, great ships, great music, lots of nostalgia, and I just think it's a really good movie for young girls and older girls too because it's just so good. But I want to know what your guys' favorite Barbie movie is, so don't forget to leave that in the comments down below. For those of you who are still around, I feel like this video Video probably ended up being very long but I just like talking about Barbie movies I don't think I would recommend binge watching all 36 movies but Nina and I had a good time and yeah it was just fun to uh, to reminisce on some childhood memories so let me know down below what your favorite movie is I can't wait to read all about it anyways guys my name is Caitlin you can follow me everywhere at Kate Loves Disney don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video but that's all I have to say for today I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very very soon honestly Magic of Pegasus is better than Princess Honestly, you're wrong. It's the best one. It's on a whole other level. Did you not hear me? I just ranted about it.